Okay, this is section 5.3, and it's called Solving Quadratic Equations by Factoring. So before the holiday, we spent a lot of time talking about how to factor quadratic equations. And we left off at looking at what we actually need factoring quadratic equations for. And it turns out that in this section, we're going to discuss how we can use the factors of a quadratic expression to solve quadratic equations. So I'm going to explain to you a little bit of why we can do this and how to do this with a couple examples and then at the end you'll be able to try a couple on your own and we can talk about those in class as well as any questions you have from watching this video. Okay, and feel free to rewind, rewatch some of the examples as I work through them. So first thing I want to talk about is this thing called the zero product property and that's the first little piece in your notes on your note sheet. This is what actually makes sense with solving by factoring. This is what enables us to do what we're about to do in a couple minutes. Here's what it says. If AB, or A times B, equals zero, then either A has to be zero, or B has to be zero. And that is kind of an obvious property that we take for granted, but, but think about it. If you have two numbers in your head, think about, these, think about any two numbers that multiply to zero. Okay? One of those two numbers that you thought of had to have been a zero. You can't get two numbers that are not zero to multiply together to get us a zero. That's important because that's what's going to enable us to use the factors of a quadratic expression to solve equations. Okay? And here's how we're going to do that. So there's four steps. Fill them in in your notes and this will teach you how to go step by step through the process. So if I ever ask you to use factoring to solve quadratics, this is what I'm expecting you to do. The first thing you need to do is you need to set one side of the equation equal to zero. This is very important. Underline this, star this in your notes. We can't use the factoring method until we get one side equal to zero. That's important because when we start out, I'll give you the equations already in that form. But it's possible that you might not always get it to look that way. And I have some examples as we go forward here that look like that. So the first thing you need to do is get one side equal to zero. Then, you factor the other side. There will be some sort of quadratic trinomial, which means three terms. One has an x squared in it. It will look like the problems we were looking at before break. Factor that down as far as you can go. And remember the rules that we talked about. Looking for a GCF. Looking for difference of squares. Splitting the middle. All those different techniques that I taught you, that's going to come into play right here. Then, we're going to use that zero product property. And what we're going to do is, since we now have two expressions that multiply to equal zero, then that means we can set each factor equal to zero and solve. Okay? So it's as simple as factoring, setting each factor to zero, and solving for the variable. So if you're an expert at factoring, if you left for break knowing totally how to factor, and reviewing factoring when we came back was easy for you, then this next step is not much more algebra. Okay, let's look at the first example. So we have the equation x squared minus 3x minus 28 equals 0. First thing we ask ourselves, is this in standard form? Does one side of the equation equal 0? And yes, it does. So we can skip that first step. Now the next step is we need to factor the left-hand side. So we need to come up with two numbers that multiply to negative 28 and add to negative 3. What could they be? If you thought about negative 7 and positive 4, you're absolutely right. So we can factor this as x minus 7 times x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, so now we can use the zero product property. Since we have two things that multiply to equal 0, then that means either the first factor, x minus 7, equals 0, or the second factor, x plus 4, equals 0. And now we have two separate equations that we solve algebraically. So we get that x can either be 7 or x can be negative 4. It's a quadratic. There's going to be two solutions generally because we have an x squared in our equation. Okay. So there's one example. Let's look at a little bit more complicated example. x squared minus 4x equals 12. So now we have to ask ourselves, does one side equal 0? It doesn't. So we need to get one side equal to 0, and the easiest way to do that is bring over the 12. So if we subtract 12 from both sides, 
we get x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0, and that's in the form I want. So now, we're going to use the same factoring trick we did in the last problem. We want to come up with two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 4. So think about that. Did you think about negative 6 and positive 2? Because that would work for me. So now we have two different factors set equal to 0. x minus 6 equals 0 and x plus 2 equals 0. And we can solve them each. And we have x equals 6 or x equals negative 2. Okay? So it's not much more complicated than what you've seen before break with factoring. But that's the hardest part is being able to factor the expression. All right, let's look at one more. This is probably the hardest kind of factoring problem you can see for a couple reasons. Well, one, so we've got 2x squared plus 7x minus 2 equals 28. Okay, so I can see here because I have a 2 in front of my x squared, I'm going to have to use that split the middle term, uh, that unfoiling split the middle method that we've looked at before. But I also have a 28 over on the right, so before I can even think about unfoiling, I've got to bring the 28 over, so I subtract 28 from both sides and I get 2x squared plus 7x minus 30 equals 0. Okay, so splitting the middle. Remember, we want to pick two numbers now that multiply not just to the negative 30, but multiply to a times negative 30, so it would be 2 times negative 30 or negative 60, but then still add to 7. And those two numbers are positive 12 and negative 5. So that plus 7x in the middle now, we can rewrite that as 2x squared plus 12x minus 5x minus 30 equals 0. Then we can take out a GCF of the first two terms. So there's a 2x in both 2x squared and 12x, and our leftovers are x plus 6, so they go in parentheses. And then there's a negative 5 in both negative 5x and negative 30, so we'll take out the negative 5, and we're left with, again, x plus 6. So we can put the outside numbers, the 2x and the negative 5, into one set of parentheses, and the x plus 6 into the other set of parentheses, and that is my factored form of the equation. Now I can set each factor equal to 0 using the zero product property. So we have 2x minus 5 equals 0, and x plus 6 equals 0, and then we just solve like we did in Algebra 1. So we'll add 5 to both sides for that first equation to get 2x equals 5 and divide through by 2, so x equals 5 halves, or 2.5, however you want to write it. 2 and a half would work as well. And then the other equation, we just subtract 6 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 6. Okay, it is as simple as that. That is how you use factoring to solve quadratic equations. You have a couple practice problems to do on the note sheet. Give those a try. They're similar to the ones in the video, so if you want to rewind the video and rewatch some of my explanations for these, that's totally up to you. We'll talk about the practice problems in class tomorrow. We'll do more examples. We'll look at some word problems. And we'll continue to build our knowledge of solving quadratic equations. So with that, have a good evening, and I will see you in class.